So Paul wanted me to present you with the new group memories book. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm delighted to have one, please. Thank you. I didn't think I could afford it, so. <laughs> there are people looking out for you. All right. <laughs> okay. I don't have a list, so it's kind of a free-for-all from here. I'm close. <laughs> please. And I only know half of you, so. Introduce yourself when you come up. Okay. Harry Kerr, I ran the group from 1969 to 79. Uh, John Nasser, who unfortunately is no longer with us, is the one that introduced me to the group. I knew a couple of them already. Uh, the two, I'm gonna tell two quick stories. Uh, the first one, we were running around the, the warm-up track. I guess you guys don't do that anymore. But the warm-up track was very important. We'd get out there, the earliest one, and he'd go around maybe 10 times. And then the last one shows up would be one time. But we were all ready to go, and some magic happened, and we headed for the gate and down 15th. And then from there, a run would appear in the mind. Somebody would decide what it was, or we had a rabbit, or something. But we're going to run. and. Uh, but we were warming up. And uh, this was back when Bowerman was still coach and he had just installed the new scientific, or I mean, synthetic track over on the main track. And he was leaning against the fence looking at it. Nobody had even touched it since it had been installed. <laughs> and he was smiling. He was one happy coach. He had done something nobody else had done. And all of a sudden he seen us, and so he motioned us over as we came around. And back then you didn't disobey coach, even though we were athletes, you know, we were town people and everything. So we wandered over there and Bill said, uh, I really like to have you guys test this track. Well, sure. <laughs> So we went out there, we trotted around three or four times and came back and gave him a big thumbs up and everything. And he walked away with a very happy camper and it proved itself. And he took our, took our word for it. Another story, quick. Am I on a, how many minutes do I got here, Tim? Two? Uh, a story about one of the founders of this group. Uh, Jim had decided to take some of us up Mount Washington. And so we all showed up at Big Lake and camped. And during the night, the weather changed. In the morning, he, as usual, Jim was up, kind of scurrying around. He came over to the pickup. I was laying in the back there sleeping. Woke me up and says, uh, well, kind of bad day for climbing, but let's go for a walk. And I kind of looked at Jim and, you know, he says, oh, we might as well take our stuff with us. We need the exercise, carry a little extra weight. So there, I don't know how many of us there was, but we headed off in the snow conditions, wind blowing, a little bit of rain, and we headed up toward, toward Mount Washington. I don't know how he figured that out, because it was almost too, you could hardly see through the fog and stuff. Eventually, we got to the place where you rope up. I think we went two more feet and we were in clear, sunny weather. The clouds were below us. The summit was, I mean, the rock was dry. It was the best climb, climb I've ever had on Mount Washington. And we got, we did it, we came down. By that time, the weather was perfect and we slaughtered back to the camp. And that was the main thing I think that Jim taught me was you always got to just give it a try because it might get better. So if you're in bed and it's raining and you don't feel like going running, go running because it might clear up. <laughs>